reconnect. All right, people. Hey, look, you know what? I'm focusing on y'all right now because you're here. So Zoom, I don't know what's going on there, but nonetheless, um, that, that anything that we have on our resume, anything that we think makes us somebody worth knowing or, or somebody worth making it to heaven, it's nothing if you don't know Jesus. And Paul's not talking about knowing that, that Jesus uh, was born to Mary and Joseph, uh, that, that he was born in Bethlehem and that he you know, grew up. It's not knowing those facts about Jesus. It's about this intimate knowledge of Jesus. And the word, um, you know, Paul uses Greek, but the word know in Hebrew, uh, Adam knew Eve and Seth was born. It's about this intimate knowing. And that is, that is what God wants for us, is this intimate knowing of Jesus and Jesus knowing us, for us to possess Jesus as Jesus has indeed possessed us, giving it all up for that. I want to... Um, I have a list of scriptures and we think about it because, you know, I, I, have, I have laughed and, and I do have that box still. Um, in fact, it was like a little devotion. It was part of one of the early COVID sermons and I, I laid them all, you know, I opened up the box of the awards and junk and I laid them all out again. And, and I keep saying, like I said the first time, like I wasn't going to move it to the new house, but then you have this box, right? Well, you can't not move it. And they're back in the box again because you can't not move it. But... Like, who cares that I have the Catherine Hardesty Award? Do you know what the Catherine Hardesty Award is? It's a social studies award in Calvert County. I have the Sir Isaac Newton Award, too. Do you know what Psi, I don't know, what is it? Sigma, I don't know, anyway. But, but what does it matter, right? Um, I can't tell you my G GPA, but, but it doesn't matter. I could stand up here and I could have all these accolades and, and, and absolutely know nothing about Jesus, that's not going to do you any good, not going to do me any good, right? Just wasting a lot of time. We're called to know Jesus, and in knowing Jesus, it means counting all of that as trash. That's, that stuff's hard to give up. I like to tell people that, man, I just admit it to being pretty prideful, didn't I? I mean, who doesn't like to tell people your achievements? And I'm not saying that you can't have them, but, you know, I mean, it's all rubbish for knowing Christ. What, what, should, what should be the first things on our lips, right? Should be about that knowledge of, not uh, knowledge about Jesus, but knowledge of who Jesus is, who Jesus is in our lives and, and, and what difference it makes. I was, I've been trying really hard just to be a nice person out in public. Y'all would be happy for that, wouldn't you? Your pastor to be a nice person out in public. Uh, yesterday, I was running late, not a surprise to get to Calvert County. I realized that the funeral home I was going to wasn't the one I thought I was going to. It was 30 minutes further south. But I needed gas, and I, I, the gas, but that thing, it drops and hits me in the ankle. Thankfully, it didn't pour gas all over me, but I just said, ow, I didn't say any bad words. And the woman at the pump next to me, she's like, are you okay? I said, well, thank you. And I was like, and thank you for asking. You know, because typically that's, but that's, that, anyway, but this idea of, of, I felt like on her lips was indeed her knowledge of Jesus in terms of caring about this woman dropping the gas pump on her ankle. But nonetheless, you know, we are called, we are, we are called for that to be what exudes from us. See, I want to list all my achievements right here, right now, but I'm going, well, no, I'm not supposed to. They're trash. Like, man, all the things I need to throw in the trash, I want to tell you so that I throw them in the trash, but then that's telling you, and that's about what that is, and not about the value of knowing Jesus. Are you following? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but let me, let me share this uh, story. Uh, Jesus tried to Jesus tried to help people out there. Uh, first, he says, um, he goes, okay, if you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way and take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Anything worth more than your soul? $400 billion. You might could almost convince me. No, just kidding. Uh, that's an old joke about, you know, the guy wanting to take his gold to heaven with him, and when he gets there, Peter's like, okay, what's in the suitcase? And he opens it up, and they're like, oh, thanks for being, bringing pavement, you know. So this idea, like, you know, what... 
to have the awards, to wallpaper your wall with them, to, I don't know, book weights. I don't know what you're supposed to do with those things. But, but what does it matter? That, that, that is something that the world looks at. And sees. I'm not saying that don't, don't try to achieve things, right? I'm not saying don't do those, those things, but, but that's not who you are. Who you are is, is a beloved child of God, made in God's image. Who you are is a person who is, is more than a conqueror. Uh, and in fact, Paul talks about in Philippians 3 this idea of having that resurrection power and living that, that, that operating, not just, oh yeah, Jesus rose from the dead, but know what that means in our lives. It means that we indeed too will rise from the dead, uh, that, that we indeed too will have a new life everlasting, but have a new life now. Because that's what Christ's death and resurrection meant, was that, that it was something that, that we gain access to now. That none of that list, none of that resume is worth a hill of beans. Now, sometimes, though, uh, on that resume, and, and he kind of, well, some, sometimes our resume, though, isn't filled with achievements. Sometimes we, we feel that the resume that we have is, is, is those, those struggles that we have, be it, you know, be it addiction or guilt or shame or unconfessed, unconfessed sin or, or unforgiveness or, or any of those things, and we keep those as well. Um, and, and we keep those as a hindrance to knowing Christ. That's all rubbish too. What's the only thing that matters? That you know Jesus, right? And it's, it's an intimate knowledge. And the one thing, uh, the, the, the language in uh, Paul's letter in, in um, Philippians 3 is this loss and gain, loss and gain, and it's, it's this uh, sort of creditor language. But, um, and I'd like to find, oh, where's the word? Um, the, the, the word they use there for garbage, it's cleaned up garbage, uh, but really it's what they would throw out to the dogs, and they don't have pet dogs, folks, so it's what they threw out to the dogs, or also translated as dung, as crap. It's all that. All of the, all, you know, the, the Nobel Peace Prize doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. $400 billion doesn't matter. Um, your addiction is thrown out to the dogs for knowing Christ. And Paul repeats himself over and over. In fact, I was writing it down one time. I'm like, in the one verse, okay, he said it, and then he said it an opposite way. And then he said it again in case you didn't get it the first time, the second time, or even the third time. But I was kind of laughing as I was even standing up here, this idea of like, I don't think I've still got it yet. <laughs> you know, and, and that there is freedom, well, I've been told, actually, maybe I shouldn't, I've been told that there really is freedom in living with that stuff as trash and knowing Christ and who you are in Christ as, as what you walk in every day. But that is the freedom that God offers us. If we could, if we could indeed take that box of awards and throw them in, in the garbage can, they don't matter. You worked hard for them, yes. You did a good job, yes. But that's not what defines you. And yeah, you mess up. But that's not what defines you either. It's all there. But lest we just think it's those sort of relative things. Here's a, a parable that Jesus shares. It's about the kingdom of God. He says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. The kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man discovered he sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy it, to buy the field where the treasure was hidden. I know what I want to say, but I'm trying to decide the nicest way to put it, maybe. Um, so, the kingdom of heaven is offered to you. What are you willing to give up for it? Do you go sell everything you own to buy it? With joy? That's what he said. He said he, uh, um, the man, just, in his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to have money to buy the field. Kingdom of heaven. Yeah, Y'all are looking at me like this guy looked at Jesus. You know the story. I like to tell it anyway. I'll find it. Look, I marked the pages at least, right? Uh, 
once a religious leader asked Jesus this question, good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked, only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your mother and father. The man replied, well, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. When Jesus heard his answer, he said, there's still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Do you all know how this one turns out? But when the man heard this, he became very sad because he was very rich. And when Jesus saw this, he said, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? In fact, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. I'm not going to go into the whole eye of a camel. God isn't saying that rich people cannot enter the kingdom of God. But why is it difficult? Because you don't want to give it up, right? Because you earned it. Shoot, that's a box of awards from high school. Someone only have, and I don't want to put them in the trash. I, I, I was teaching junior high Sunday school, and we were playing the game of life. I had like come up with this. They were really excited about playing the game of life, and we had like a devotion every time for it. And I had it all planned out in the middle. I was going to say, all right, sell all you have, give it away. If you want to follow Jesus, I was winning in the middle of the game. I changed it a little bit. It's a game. It's a game. I don't know, maybe I'm alone up here in that idea. What, what's the only thing that matters? It's knowing Jesus. But we find ourselves uh, enslaved, really. We find ourselves enslaved to that resume. We find ourselves enslaved to the, the, the toys that, that we have in, in our homes and in our, our driveways. And, and um, this is not, we are at a place where there is water. So I'm not like pointing, in our docks. Yeah, so again, if we were in the middle of Iowa, I would not say anything about docks, okay? So, um, but we, we become enamored with, with all of what we have, all of who we are. We've set up such this, this means by which to judge one another, uh, to judge one another as worthy, that we forget the only thing that matters is knowing Christ, being known by Christ. Why is that so hard? Y'all don't have the answer for me. Like, I was like, like no. And, and Paul, Paul literally, you know, he knows it's hard. That's why he continues to repeat it. And in the first verse, he's like, look, I never tire of telling you these things because it's to safeguard you. It's to safeguard your faith. The only thing that matters is knowing Jesus. And I, I, I wrote down in my notes that if you had to... From on a scale of 1 to 10, right, like your desire for the, the way that you desire Jesus. One was like, that's absolutely my first, it's all trash except for Jesus. It's my first pri priority. Or, or 10 is, well, what number would you hit? I'm not at a 1. I mean, Paul goes that, he goes, look, I haven't achieved perfection either. I'm on that same journey with you. I was getting ready to ask uh, for a show of hands. I decided against it. But, but this idea of, of, of really, in your life, in your life, what is it that's getting thrown in the trash can as if it were rubbish? And what is being elevated as if it were the only thing that mattered? I'm letting y'all think, because um, we've got to do better. We have, a, we have a country, we have a community, we have a world that is hurting because all of the trash is what is being valued. And Christ indeed has no value 
There, there's not a desire uh, to, to, to want to know Jesus, to want to be known by Jesus. And in, in, in knowing Jesus in that intimate way, it's about being obedient. It's about following Christ. It's about being that example that others can follow. We've got to do better. That's been my brother's new saying, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's a good idea, right? We've got to do better. We've got to do better. I know COVID, and that's why we're all spaced out, but come on, folks, you know before COVID, this would be about how many people we'd have in the sanctuary. It might be a little bit more. You know? It's a hurting world. It's a world that needs Jesus. It's a world that needs to quit valuing garbage and valuing the word of God, valuing God's people, God's creation. We talked about, you know, the end of the world. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Peter writes, God, God's tarrying because there are people who need to know Jesus. You're ready for the world to come? You're ready for, you know, the kingdom to be here on earth as it is in heaven? Well, get busy being like Jesus. Get busy sharing the gospel. Get busy desiring Christ above all else. I got called on the carpet yesterday by a friend, too, about, like, reading would be a better idea than the TV I watch. I was like, well, you're right. You can pray about that. So, um, so with that... The question is, um, what do you have to throw away? What is it that indeed is a detriment? Um, what, what is a detriment to your relationship with Christ? What is standing in the way of it? And, and maybe it's the like, well, I know what it is, but I'm not throwing it away, Katie. And I keep going, well, maybe I could get cable cut off, but then I'd just watch Amazon Prime. No, God is really pushing my buttons, too, if you want to know that truth, um, because, and because we've got to do better. We've got to do better. Um, we, we live in a world that doesn't, that, we, we live in a world that's a mess. I mean, that's the best I can say. I mean, I, 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 I've been watching way too much Game Show Network, right? America says, and, 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 and the, like, the number one answer for like, the most ignored thing at Christmas, it was Jesus. They actually at least knew that the number one thing that was ignored at Christmas was Jesus. Um, I, the, the other day I told, there was like the words in Christmas songs, none of them directly re relating to, to Jesus except for the word Christmas. What are we doing, people? Like really, what are we doing? So it's all garbage except for knowing Jesus and, and, and allowing ourselves to be known by Jesus. And yes, I've repeated myself a hundred times because we haven't gotten it, have we? So who's with me? Who's willing to really consider, um, consider those things that need to be tossed away, th those things that, that keep us from a relationship with Christ? And I think, I think for, many, um, for, for many in Western Christianity, it's our stuff. That's what distracts us. Uh, we spend too much time trying to take care of our stuff, clean it, put it away, downsize it, clean it, put it away, downsize it, uh, cut the grass, I don't know, all of those things. Uh, but also... What stands in our way sometimes is our pride in who we, who we think we need to be, uh, who we think we are, who we think we aren't. And so my, um, I, I think we have prayer cards this week as well. Um, and um, that will encourage you. Oh, I've got one for you all too. Um, the prayer is, uh, Lord, help me to see it all as garbage compared to knowing you and trash it. And then uh, it says, what are those things you desire or rely on more than Jesus? And what do you allow to define you instead of being defined by who you are in Christ? Um, you know, Paul, Paul's rubbish, he was saying, like, look, you know, I could count myself righteous. I have all of this, the, these accolades, but it's nothing I can do. It's only what Jesus can do. We can have all these accolades. We can have all this stuff. We can have $400 billion, three Academy Award nominations, hotels in our name. But without knowing Christ, it's worthless. So um, we, uh, we are going to move into a time where we are going to celebrate Holy Communion, which is all about knowing Jesus, where we believe that the real presence of Christ is found in the bread and in the cup. Um, we, use, we use grape juice here just in case that that's a concern for anyone. Any, and all are welcome to take communion. We also have gluten-free, um, and it's gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free, 
casein-free, if you have any of those um, uh, allergen um, questions. And, and I know I've, I'm a little bit scattered today, and I apologize for that, but it's because I can't read that without being so convicted that it's hard to preach it because it's hard to be convicted. Um, I have moved several times in my life, and oftentimes I have to bring somebody over to the house who will throw away the things that I don't want to throw away, but that needs to be thrown away. Alexi is like, I'm signing up for that job. <laughs> See, I caught that. But, um, but as, we, as we receive communion today, though, I do want you to think about uh, that which needs to be thrown away, and it is my intention we'll have to keep bringing one in here, is to have a trash can here, throw it away. I'm not going to read it. Just throw it away. Um, and God will continue to show you those things that need to be thrown away, whether it is an attitude or whether it is something physical uh, that is standing in your, in your way. Because uh, the only thing that matters is knowing Jesus uh, and, and relying on Christ uh, for um, eternity. So um, let us, I'm going to actually turn off the YouTube. If I ever